Hi, welcome to Wellness. I'm your host, Linda Lonigan, Senior Clinical Nutritionist. I am here to show you the very best your community has to offer in health, fitness, nutrition, well-being, amazing people, and events. Today, I am joined by Michael J. Weiser of MJ Weiser Law, who is an adjunct professor at Westchester Community College for Entrepreneurs, as well as co-owner of Westchester Angels Investment Group. Welcome, Michael. Thank you, and thank you for inviting me today. Oh, sure. Absolutely. So I'm always saying that business health is business wealth. So how did you become what uh, you have become? I know you have 29 years of experience. Well, it's been a very interesting run. Um, I've basically uh, done a lot of different things. Um, I've been a lawyer for 29 years, but through that sort of experience, I've also founded and um, it basically developed six different companies uh, across all different industries. So when I sort of practice law, sure. I bring the background of having been an entrepreneur myself to the table. Yeah, absolutely. And um, and I, as I share with you that in, uh, in Network Master Network, that every time you speak and show up, you learn. And I know you've walked the walk and talked the talk in so many areas of your life, in addition to health and wellness. Both you and your wife always exercise and take care of yourself. Um, so I'm sure you're a mentor to many people in what you do. Yeah, I would say that I am. Um, I've always had a value in um, having a social purpose and uh, entrepreneurship and basically taking a great idea and turning it into a successful business, I think is, is really important to help provide guidance in that way. Um, and that's why I'm also involved with uh, teaching and different programs to sort of share that wisdom with other people. Can you tell a little bit about Westchester Angels? Oh, okay. So, so um, what I did in my, uh, basically in my career is, um, as I said, giving back to, uh, to entrepreneurs and helping them launch these businesses, I got involved with the group Westchester Angels uh, a couple years ago. And if anybody's familiar with um, the television show Shark Tank, Absolutely. you see that there are a lot of people who want to raise funding to scale their businesses and grow them and make them even bigger and healthier. Um, so the Westchester Angels is kind of a, a, a platform where accredited investors, people who are looking to diversify in the sort of investments that they have, have an opportunity to meet Westchester-based or new, local New York City uh, area-based entrepreneurs so they can get that kind of funding and everybody can work collaboratively to help you know, realize the dreams that these entrepreneurs have. Wonderful. That's wonderful. And can, can you give an example of some young man that just gave you an idea that you're working with it? Is it all specifically one area or is it? No, we, we go across an, every different type of um, industry. Wow. Um, a good idea is a good idea. Usually the company has to have a little bit of a, uh, some traction. They have to show that their ideas are validated by the marketplace. Sure. Uh, but the ideas can be anything from um, something for space exploration to wow. a, a, a mobile app on your phone to wow. uh, a business selling uh, organic baby food. You know, so we see all kinds of different things. And, uh, you know, the, the common um, success is that you have people that basically have a, an entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. And, and uh, to, yeah. to be, be able to foster that and provide guidance is, is, is really wonderful. And you don't realize how much guidance you provide. Like I said, your, your quote of, uh, of just show up <laughs> or part of that is something that every time I'm tired or I just don't have the motivation, it's like just remain, remember what Michael uh, said in terms of just show up. Yeah, so, you, you, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so the whole notion of just showing up is, you know, very often you're not executing as perfectly as you can or, or you, maybe you haven't thought things through. But, um, you know, entrepreneur life can be very, very lonely. Yeah. And um, you, if you make yourself part of the business community and just, just show up to all the events, <laughs> you know, things will happen because you, you have a presence. Sure. And uh, that, that's sure. sort of why I, I enjoy saying that. Yeah, and you help in so many, so many different areas. You got to tell me that favorite quote again, because I want my viewers to be oh, aware of that. How okay. important it is. Well, I, I will attribute it to uh, a Red Hot Chili Peppers song that I really <laughs> like, and and the, the this the quote goes or the lyric goes, "I'd rather regret the things that I've done than the things that I haven't done." So important. Um, and and when it comes to like working with businesses, sure. very often they're waiting for the perfect. 
um, formulation of what they're doing before they launch, before they get started. Right. But I could say in my experience that it takes time. It takes a year. It takes two years. It takes three years to find your footing, to actually, you know, basically validate what you're doing and move right. forward. So every day that you delay launching or starting right. is just another day that you're going to take to actually achieve. Wonderful. So, 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 um, you know, a lot of people, they get to the age that we're at yeah. and they say, oh, if I had only done this and they regret all the things that they didn't do. Right. Uh, but um, the truth of the matter is, is that, uh, you know, just get started. Just just do it. Right. And that's know? very valuable um, that what you shared that so many people want to get on an idea and jump on it and, and really get to work. But you're saying that maybe it takes a little bit more time to uh, to revise it or make it clear. Right. Or, well, uh, you, you're going to basically, it's always trial and error and you're always adjusting, but you just got to get started. Right. <laughs> right. And what are some quick tips in terms of business entrepreneurs that you can share with all of your experience? Well, that you have? let's see. The first thing I would say is um, it's very important to put a team together. Now, a lot of people might say, well, I don't have the money to pay anybody. But the interesting thing is, is that people who have success are usually willing to be a mentor and provide guidance. Right. Um, so if you basically are a, a technician and you have an expertise in a particular area, right. you have to be smart enough to realize where you're not an expert. Right. You know, if you're an expert uh, programmer, sure. you know, you do web development, sure. you may not be like, you know, have the skill set of being a, a, a CEO or a financial person right. or um, a marketing person. Right. So right. even though you can't afford to actually hire those people and start a, start a business, you need to build a team of people that you can rely on, that you can get guidance from. Because like, as I said, entrepreneurship can be very lonely, right. but the way that you show a team and build a team, you don't necessarily have to pay people if you can get them to sort of work with you. And, and people you typically who have reached some level of success in doing these different things like to give back. So, so that's, that's one tip that I would say. That's one tip. And uh, in terms of what you do, um, we assume that because we get a general means of paperwork or something that we're on top, but things are continually change. And what you do is uh, you take all of that and make it clear through these many, yeah. many years of expertise. So, so that, that's an interesting thing that you're bringing up. Um, I, I work a lot with um, health and wellness type of entrepreneurs. Okay. You know, they're, they're business people who have a social purpose. Um, who, who want to give back to the community. Um, but we all know that, you know, if you're on an airplane, the first thing you're supposed to do is put your air mask on so then you can help others. Right. And very often that step gets skipped by a lot of health and wellness entrepreneurs. Sure. Um, so what I mean by that is that um, it's equally important to both you and your client yeah. To establish what the rules are in, of your engagement, what are the expectations of both parties in that uh, uh, engagement, right? Sure. Because disputes happen and, 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 and anxiety and all the different negative health consequences happen when you have uncertainty right. and then conflict. Sure. Um, the way to prevent that is by having an agreement that basically spells that out. So what I often hear is that a contract usually people think of as something that will deter their potential engagement. You know, I, you know, they want to work with me. How can I now put a contract in front of them because I'm going to scare them off? Right. But you can't really think that way. Right. What you have to understand is that the health of any relationship right. is based on communication. Right. So sure. whether it's personal communication, whether it's this business communication, sure. whether it's with your kids, your parents, whatever, right. the health of that relationship is based on communication. Right. And having that sure. contract sure. Is, is the way that you basically establish what those expectations and what that relationship is going to look like. Right. And that right. will prevent the disputes that you have. Right. So, so, so people intuitively understand that when I explain it, but they still are like, well, if I stick this document in front of them and it's got all kinds of whereases and heretofores and all the other jargon that lawyers use, it, it will scare them off. Mm -hmm. And what I say to that is that it doesn't have to. Because you can basically um, do an agreement where you ba creating the, the rules and creating the expectations and disclaiming certain outcomes and all the different things that are important in agreement right. Right. with a simple letter. 
right? right? So the letter agreement can start off with a paragraph or two that's just a, a, a friendly, hey, it's been so great meeting with you. I'm so excited to work with you. I know that our collaboration is going to be wonderful. Um, just for record keeping, I want to make sure we're on the same page. Right. So, right. you know, my lawyer kind of makes me say these things, but, you know, I have to listen to sure. the, his advice. Um, so here's the, the rules that, now here's the sort of way that we can communicate and work together and get the outcome that we agree right. to, right? right? So a simple letter on your letterhead, right. you know, it, it, it's, it doesn't have to be intimidating. Right. And, 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 you know, all too often, uh, lawyers and law firms, they basically use templated forms that they've used for 20 years and they have like 30 pages of legal jargon. You don't need to do that. No. But what you do need to do is establish the expectations for both sides. Right. And if things don't work out, yeah, we can part as friends, and this is how we unwind it. Sure. But but the bottom line is is that um, you want to make your own foundation, sure. business, health, and wellness. <laughs> you want to be able to secure your own foundation and and do the things that you want to do. Um, one last thing to just add is that you know uh, we live in in a society where um, you know it could be litigious. It, it could it could be um, very scary in business uh, but but you know having that proper foundation having everybody's expectations met uh, really will do a lot um, you know the last thing I just want to say say one more thing there is is that um, you know we think of health and wellness and often that's tied into our physical health, right. our mental health, right. um, but the triggers right. come from different places. Right. You know, it, it could be from the personal relationship with your mother, your child, or sure. whatever that is, sure. but it can also be from anxiety and conflict and, and, and problems having to do with your financial situation, sure. which is tied into your work. Sure. And if you really want to have a social purpose, you know, we do live in a capitalist society, so if you get that foundation set, then you can do all the all of the great things that you want to do in your business. And that's that's so unbelievably valuable. You know, you've taken so much intimidation and so much overwhelming uh, feelings away by what you say and what you do and the experience that you phenomenally have. And I know you've walked the walk and talked the talk, both you and your lovely wife, exercise and eat well and you really try to keep on top of everything you possibly can and at the same time help so many. You really do, Michaels. Thank you so much. Oh, thank Premier. you. It was a pleasure to have you. <laughs> okay, great. Remember, when you eat well and feel great, it's something you want to do for the rest of your life. Remember, balance and moderation is key. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good night.